What is going on? My armless army is showing you with that snare serpentarium. I'm in my reptile room right now, aka the snake room, aka the man cave, aka where I spend most of my time. <laughs> So today is going to be episode one of the breeding uh, journal. Um, today I've got a few things that I've got to do, uh, preparations for breeding. Um, it's early on in the season right now, as I'm sure you know. I'm starting to cool down the dumber as boas. I've already cooled them to a certain extent, but to cool them any colder because of the temperature I need to maintain in my reptile room, I've got to move them down a level in the rack. Today I also need to fix something, um, because of the rack I'll actually show you in a second, but there's far too much ventilation in this uh, racking system that I've got, well one of the racking systems, and what it's causing is causing a lot of problems with stuck shed, um, even if I miss down daily I'm still having some issues with stuck shed and, and things like that, so it's not maintaining humidity well enough. They're good sized tubs though so I'm really happy with that and I had a good price for it but I'm going to have to sort that issue out today. The clown boy is locking like there's no tomorrow. He locked with the, the lassa yesterday who is back in the breeding cycle already this year. Um, simply because if she's not ready she won't go. Um, but if she is ready she will go and she might use the pastel uh, the pastel from last year's sperm plugs and I don't really want to do that. Um, if I'm going to have babies from her I'd rather them be heck clown babies so I can keep some back for myself which would be epic. He's also been locking up with the special girl. Um, the special girl she's about 16 and a half hundred grams. Uh, 16 and a half hundred grams yeah and um, she's putting on weight every week so I'm expecting her to go. They've locked about probably eight, nine, ten times probably already so I, I, I am expecting something to come out of that but we'll see. And also guys, I have decided that the 4 Jean girl that I've got, she's actually going to be going to my clown this year as well. Um, I did say I typically like to wait for them to be 3 years old, but with her case, um, I don't really have any plans for her long term. Um, I do just want to make hat clowns for myself. I do want that 4 Jean girl replicated in a hat clown, which would be fantastic. Um, and after that, I don't even know if I'd breed her again, to be honest though. So it would be pretty cool to get those uh, those hat clowns made. She is up to size. Um, I wouldn't breed her if she wasn't up to the 1500 gram mark, but I do typically wait until they're larger than that. Um, this is going to be the exception to the rule for me. I am just going to go for it. I still think she'll hit 1800 to 2000 grams before she actually um, actually lays any eggs. So that's that's not so bad then. Um, she is com she will be coming up to the two and a half year mark. But again, I do usually like to wait until the two and a half before I even pay them. So um, that's something to just uh, just keep in mind. So today, obviously, I said I've got a few things to sort out. The rosies as well, the uh, the adult pair of rosies, they need to be cooled down a little bit cooler than what they actually are now. So I've got to move some things around so that can be arranged. I'm probably going to have to brew mate the Max Max King snakes today as well because they're, they're off food. Um, I've been told that that group of snakes tends to not eat during winter, which is fine. I'll just have to brew mate them um, and hopefully they'll I'll solve any issues then with feeding. I'm doing exactly the same with the Arizona Mountain King that I got from Doncaster. Um, she'll be cooled down as well. So then I'm hoping that um, once I cool her down, all the issues will, uh, will you know, all the metabolism will slow down. And then once I warm her back up, she'll start smashing the food again. The breeder did tell me that she was eating previously, but she has stopped the last few weeks, which is fine. Um, it is expected sometimes of, of that species to do that. So um, it's just one of them things. The Dumerals haven't eaten since mid-August. Um, I like to, uh, some species I like to chunk them up before I cool them, and that's exactly what I did with them. Uh, some, some people say that what they do is they just keep a daytime high 
uh, on the warm spot not as normal and then have the cool end drop um, especially at night but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to more or less maintain a constant cool temperature in there um, purely because if I can feed them up in the summer and then just drop the temperatures back I'd rather do that um, I'll see if it works if it doesn't work then I'll adopt the other people's methods this method is actually quite a bit easier for me um, if it works then fantastic if it doesn't better luck next year the Dumerals do need a quite cool to breed um, down to the 60s in the cold spot that's pretty typical and then I'm just gonna keep the warm end then at about 75 or 80 degrees um, I'll have to see how it goes on that front so let's get straight into it Wha bam <laughs> So with the racking system that I've got, the issue is that all of the top is pretty much mesh um, and it's not holding in any humidity at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some thermal tape and tape up part of it so that it holds in that humidity a lot better. But it's still got decent airflow. So that's what I'm going to do. Hopefully that'll solve the issue. If it doesn't, I'll just have to try something else. It doesn't really matter too much as long as the snakes are healthy. This stuck shed issue, it is it has been uh, annoying, especially now that I've had to turn up the uh, the heaters and stuff. Let me just go up here. Uh, there he goes, the pie boy in there, pie boy even with the hat fire girl. And then the hat fire's sister then, she's in here, she's got quite a bit of stuck shed. Um, tank's a little bit dirty actually, because she has just shed out, she's, she's pooed, so I need to clean that up. That's no issue at all though. Wait, she, she's over there. She has got a little bit of stuck shed, let me just move that light out of the way there. A little bit of stuck shed I'm not amazingly happy with that to be honest so that is something I'm gonna have to sort out right so I've finally done it it's taken me a good a good hour maybe two hours um, I have no idea how long it's taken me but that's the result on all of them some have got more some have got less Okay, it will uh, keep the humidity down. What you, what, what you may think is, oh, you know, I shouldn't have taken that long. But the thing is, is I had to unwrap all the tape. And some of the spots to get were really, really awkward. And I had to empty out a um, a giant-sized tub to uh, to move my dumb raspberries so they've got a cooler temperature for the winter. So I'll just show you this setup now. Um, hold on, I'll just knock this off. There we go, they're in there. It's an absolutely colossal uh, a tub, whatever you want to call it. It's huge. You can see how you know the snakes have got a lot of uh, a lot of floor space in there. That actually opens out about twice as wide as what it is now. If I can move it, there you go. Move it a little bit. There's stuff in the way, so I can't I can't open it all the way. You can see in there. It's huge, really really big size tank. That's the male there, the dark one, and then the lighter one is the female. So if you compare it, she's easily got enough room to stretch out her body um, in the L shape that's recommended. That, uh, that water bowl is uh, due to be cleaned, it's actually empty. Um, I'm just about to clean it. I just wanted to get them settled in before I started taking anything out that I used to. So that's their, um, their hide there. That's the biggest rabbit hide I could find. Um, the male can fit in it pretty well, the female can't, so I'm going to have to look into getting something bigger. They're really, really difficult to find hides for, but um, I'm hoping that I'll, uh, that I'll do them well. Right, so thank you for tuning in, guys. You can probably see now why I don't tend to you do uh, reptile room tours and things like that. It's a very, very small room. It's quite cluttered at the minute because I'm in the middle of insulating it all and stuff like that. And um, before winter is in full tilt, I put these curtains up because I've got a steel door and that loses a lot of heat. So these curtains tend to help uh, quite a bit, actually, I've noticed. Um, hold on a second there, if I just switch the... Then I got all this wood and polystyrene on the, on the walls there. Keeps it nice and insulated. Um, that's obviously the fuse box and stuff. And there you go.
So thanks for tuning in guys, I really appreciate you spending some time with me here today. Sorry about all the clutter, there's very little I can do about it, I'm in the middle of moving things around. Peace out guys, see you in the next one, bye! Is that tasty? Yeah?